Hello and welcome to the 1 160 of a second photography podcast. In one of my recent episodes I talked about buying photography gear from Hong Kong and I used a site called Toby Deals. And I used Toby Deals to buy a Canon 200D or an SL2 as it's known in other regions of the world. And the reason I went for this was the price was unbelievable. It was a very good price for a good camera. I bought the Canon 200D primarily for video. And that was my main reason for buying it to make um, YouTube videos because it's got wonderful autofocus, it's got good image quality for video, plug in an external microphone, and most of all it's got an articulating screen, which means I can see what I'm filming, which is really useful. I purchased it for video, but I'm going to talk about it today and give a bit of a review because I found it's an excellent stills camera. I didn't doubt it would be a good stills camera, it's just not the use case I bought it for. So my Canon cameras are a 5D and a 550D, so a full frame and an APS-C crop body. Now I paired the 200D with a 24mm EFS, lens which is an amazing combination because with that lens the whole package is very light it's very small very easy to hold it's very portable and the EFS lens the 24 millimeter EFS lens is an STM lens so the focusing is lightning quick and it doesn't make a lot of noise and it just really nails focus really well which is why I got it for video so that combination for video the lens 24 millimeter EFS lens and the Canon 200D is great for video but how does it stack up for photos well, I've been really pleased with it. And actually, it's become my, my, my go-to camera at the moment, not just because it's new, because it's just easy to use and gives good quality images. So like I say, I've come from an old full frame and an old APS-C camera. Now, those are, are fine cameras. They're very good cameras. And I've often gone on about how good I think they are and how you don't necessarily need to upgrade. Now, what I like about the 200D is it has a really nice thumb rest and grip. So I can hold it really easily, not like a small compact camera or mirrorless. It's just really easy to hold and it feels comfortable. It's got improved switches from what I'm used to. So with the 550D, you had to put it into video mode. Now I just turn it on once for stills and turn it on twice for video. And what I mean by turn it on once and turn it on twice is flick a switch from the right to the left once for stills and flick it once more for video. For me, the ISO performance is much better. I can happily shoot up to 3200 without any issue and that's really good i was happy to shoot a 3200 with the 5d which is full frame but there was a lot of noise in the image but it, it, it was usable i'm quite happy to shoot at 3200 i don't really get much noise in this and this is an aps-c camera so i can shoot much higher iso and be happy with it now what i'm finding i'm using the camera for is i'm finding i'm using the camera more and more for family photography when i'm indoor lighting isn't brilliant sort of at, at night time relying on bulbs in in the room and not using flash so i can i can get the camera out and i can take a picture of my family and my children when they're doing something and before i'd have a i'd either have to have noise in the image use a flash or have an undesirably slow shutter speed but now i can have i can shoot at 125th of a second and i i can shoot at a high iso and, and keep my shutter speed quite high don't forget i've got fast lenses so even at f2 f2.8 i'd still need quite a slow shutter speed and my children are very fast they'd be blurred you see so the good iso allows me to get good sharp images it has maximum auto ISO setting, which is a nice to have. So it had this in the Canon 550D. You can put it in auto ISO and you can set an upper limit. It's not quite as good as Fuji where you can set an auto ISO minimum shutter speed that it doesn't go below and then it varies the ISO as well. But, you know, it's certainly a nice to have. It's not something I'm going to use all the time. I, I normally like to shoot in, in as low ISO as possible, but it's certainly nice to have. And something that is new for me is rating images. So I can take an image and I can rate it and then that rating is going to transfer into Lightroom. That's great for me when I'm going back from a shoot on the train or I've got a bit of time I can rate in camera and then those pull through into Lightroom once imported. This isn't a, a brilliant thing for me but I can see its use. It ha the camera has help guides and menus and you can change them to standard menus if you want. So I've gone and changed it to the standard Canon menu I'm used to. If you're new to photography, you can turn these guides on and they tell you all about the settings and what to go for and how that's going to affect your picture. It also makes the menu settings a little less daunting because you can pick your menu for camera settings, you can pick your menu for playback settings. It just makes it a little bit less daunting. Focusing in live view is great. And that was why I purchased the camera for that in video. So I can use the articulating screen. I can get a really low angle. I can tap on a place on the screen and it will focus lightning fast 
and it can take a picture as well. So I can tap to take a picture and it will take a picture and it now is focused pretty much every time, even for fast moving children. Focusing on faces is key when doing um, family photography. And if I put it in live view, it will automatically track faces and it will use continuous focus and it keeps them in focus and it's really good. So it will identify faces and I'm really happy with the face tracking and that's really good for the photography I do with the camera. Another reason why I like it is I can just use all my existing Canon glass with it, all my existing Canon lenses and they all work and I know them and I can use them well. Another setting that's quite good is I can get smaller RAW files. I, I can compress the RAW files compared to the standard ones. I don't see the point though because I bought a 64 gigabyte SD card um, primarily for use for video. I'm unlikely to fill that up so space isn't really a problem but if you need to you can compress your RAW files. The video compatibility is better. My Canon 5D doesn't have video. My Canon 550D had good video that I was very very happy with but it stored it as a QuickTime file, an MOV file and of course I'm generally editing on a PC so it doesn't really translate that well. The 200D stores, stores video files as MP4 format and MP4 has better universal compatibility. So I can plug it into my TV, I can edit on my phone, I can edit on my PC, I can edit on a Mac. Well, another thing I like about video is you've got digital zoom and you can zoom in up to three times and you don't lose any quality. The quality stays the same. I can shoot at 60 frames per second, 30, 24, 25 and 50. For most people that might not be that useful but for me it's quite useful because if I'm pairing it with another camera I need to match the frame rate. So I live in the UK and we have power system and what that means is essentially our electricity oscillates at 50 hertz so it oscillates 50 times a second that means the lights oscillate at 50 times per second so you need to have your frame rate in multiples of 25 i.e 25 or 50 otherwise you, you see this strange flickering so if i'm shooting anything indoors i can shoot at 25 if i'm pairing footage with iphone i can shoot at 30. i've just got lots more options there's a link with a smartphone which I've not tried so the camera will generate Wi-Fi access and you can access things via an app so you can quickly get images onto your phone. You can control your camera via a phone but I haven't tried this but I know it's there for when I want to try it. So I'd say this is a good beginner's camera as the settings are all explained and it has built-in guides. This, this has really impressed me. There's even an auto mode with no flash. So you can put it in auto mode and you can put it in auto mode with no flash. And to me, this is a really obvious thing. And I don't know why it's taken people so long to figure out that you need an auto mode that doesn't trigger the flash. It's nothing worse than at sporting events where the flash goes off or you're in a museum and the flash goes off. It's not because someone's put the flash on. It's because they put their camera in auto mode and it's just triggered the flash. There are disadvantages. So the AF point coverage is all in the center. I think it's nine points. It's all in the center. To be honest, I'm not used to any anything else. I, I've always had that center waiting with Canon and it's not much of a problem with me, particularly with the live view focusing. But I think for some people it would put them off and maybe for some people they would go for a more premium Canon camera just because you've got more autofocus points and they're more spread out across the frame. I can't use my existing batteries from my other cameras. That's not the end of the world. The battery life is very good. And you've got one jog dial to set the values, but I've never found this a problem. On my Canon 5D, I've got two jog dials where I can set aperture and I can set shutter speed. On my Canon 550D, I've got one that does both. And all you have to do is you just have to press an AV button and you set the other one if that's not moving. So if you're in manual, I think the jog dial does shutter speed, AV does aperture. If you're in aperture priority, the jog dial is going to do aperture and holding down the AV button while you move the jog dial is going to do exposure compensation. And, and it's the same on the 200D and, and that's fine. So I'm going to start going out and doing more sort of street photography, more fashion shoots with this because it's just a lovely camera and I really enjoy using it. And actually that's what photography is about. So if you know anyone who is looking for a, a sort of low price DSLR or mirrorless, I would get this and you might say, ah, oh, but it's not a mirrorless, it has a mirror, it's a DSLR. Yes, that's true, but it's it just feels like a mirrorless because it's so light and it's so responsive and it's so sort of, it's just so well designed. It sort of feels like a mirrorless, but isn't. So let me know what you think about that. Would you get the Canon 200D? Let me know. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter. Don't forget you can support this podcast at Patreon. And the address for that is patreon.com forward slash 160 SPP. Thank you. Have a good day.